Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss further into differential equations and now look further into the logistic equation for modeling population growth and look at the analytical or uh, explicit solution of it. Uh, basically, the logistic equation is separable, so uh, we can solve it uh, ex explicitly using the methods shown in my earlier videos. So let's go over that again. Make sure make sure to watch my early videos on logistic equation to get a recap on it if you haven't already done so. Put those in a link below. So to recap, the differential, uh, I mean the logistic differential equation for population growth is dp over dt equals to k times p one minus and then p over capital K, where the capital K is a carrying capacity and this k is just the proportionality constant. So, like uh, like the method in my earlier video on uh, separable equations, uh, we could separate these to put all of the uh, variables of the p variable on the left side and all the ones of the t on the right side. So, in other words, we're going to divide out this entire part from both sides. So, what we'll get is, and, and then, yeah, basically divide it out, we get 1 over p, now we have 1 minus p over capital K equals 2 and then move this dt on the other side and what we get is k dt and also on the left side we have this dp over here so that's a dp like that I'll just write this a bit neater and yeah just move that over so uh, it just looks a bit neater so we have this now we could take the integral of both sides and then from there we can get the explicit solution now because everything is in terms of p and everything on the side is in terms of t. Yeah, so now in solving this, well, uh, we have to solve this integral on the left side. The one on the right side is pretty easy, but the left side, uh, let's just simplify it first. So what we could do is simplify 1 over p, 1 minus p over capital K. And then if we multiply this top and bottom by k like this, so what we end up having is... Uh, this k, it, if we just do that so we're not changing anything, so just to get rid of this k, so multiply that inside, we'll have this equals to capital K, and then we will have P uh, multiplied inside, so then we have K here minus uh, P like that, so we have this over here. Yeah, I'll just write this a bit neater. And the reason uh, we're doing this is because uh, we could now, uh, we have a slightly simpler uh, equation here. And also now, recall from my earlier videos on a partial fractions. I'll also put that in the link below. So recall partial fractions. We could simplify this even further just to make the integration easier. So recall from partial fractions. What you could do is from that method, if you have p k minus like that, this equals to a. Well, this is just this is just a constant p. So this is the uh, addition of these two separate factors, p and k minus p, like that. Yeah. Now what we could do is multiply both sides by p, uh, p times k minus p, so that everything cancels. We're on this side. What we'll end up having is when you multiply this on both sides, we get k. So this is just k equals to a over, and then the p would cancel, so we'll have k minus p. And then on the right side, the k minus p would cancel, so we'll have uh, b p like that. And now we could simplify this further on the right side, so multiply this out, so a k minus a p plus, uh, plus b p, which equals two. Again, we could factor out the p. Uh, let's put this capital K, so like that. If we take out the uh, the p, so what we'll have is a plus. Let's put a plus here, and then a b minus uh, a because we're taking out the p. So we factor out the p on both sides. So what we'll have is minus a plus b or b minus. A, so the same thing like that. And now if we bring this down here, so now this what this is saying is k equals to a k plus b minus a p. So in other words, uh, we could line up the coefficients. So what we'll have is in this one here, this is just a 1. So that's just a 1. So the 1 has to equal to a. 
and then this one there's no p here so this this coefficient is zero so zero is equal to this so what we have is a equals to one and also now what we have is zero equals to b minus a in other words a equals to b where a is equal to one so b equals to one so a and b both equal to one so this means that our uh, equation here k divided by p p times k minus one is just equal to this is going to be p k minus p write this neater and then this equals to one over p uh, then now we have plus one over k minus p yes yeah, so now what this means is the integrand or the function of the integral is equal to this now which is simpler and we could actually take the integral of it uh, pretty straightforwardly. So this whole thing, one over p times one minus p over k, that simplifies to this k over p minus uh, p times k minus p equal. Uh, then it simplifies to this. So put this all together. What we have, yeah, what we have now is the integral of one over p uh, plus one over k minus p and this is dp equals to integral of kt. Yeah, I mean k dt, not, uh, not t. So we have that. And now we could uh, just have to take the integrals of these, uh, this whole thing. And now uh, the integral, I'll just simplify this. So the integral of one over p, we could do this separately. So integral of one over p dp, recall my earlier videos, this just equals to ln of absolute value of p. And again, there's a constant. We'll add the constant all into this one later. So we have this. And now the other one, we have integral 1 over k minus p dp. What we'll do is uh, let, so I'll go, um, I'll write let u equals to uh, k minus p then take the derivative or differential du equals to negative dp. In other words, dp, let's move it over here, dp is equal to negative du. So when we plug this inside, we get now integral of 1 over u, and then du, this is du, put a negative sign, and now this is the same thing, we're going to take this, it's going to be ln of u. So this is negative ln of absolute value of u, and again, there's always that constant, but I'll hold, keep hold of it for now. This is going to be equal to, uh, just substitute this back in, negative ln of k minus p, like that. So that is what the integral of that is. And this one, that's just kt. So put this all together. What we end up having is, yeah, is now this integral of 1 over p, that equals to ln of absolute value of p plus, I'll just put the arrow from here, so this arrow coming down to here, and now plus, or now it's a minus because it's um, uh, negative there, so ln k minus p, and then now we're just going to add a constant, we'll call this c1, because remember there's an integration constant, these both have one, uh, I'll just say this is c, for example, this is c, um, let's go ci plus c, uh, I, I, and this one is just equal to C1 is equal to C, I, I plus C, I. So this is just uh, just uh, meta details, um, etc. So on the, on the right side, integral of K dt equals to, yeah, equals to, this is going to be K t plus, we'll call this constant C2. And also just another part, just for completeness sake, the integral here, we add that constant there as well, so plus c i i. So that's just for completeness sake. And now what we can do is, yeah, what we can do is combine the c1 and c2 into just one constant, because uh, these additions of it, all these constants are still constant. So we'll throw this over to that side, and what we end up getting is, yeah, is a um, ln of p minus ln of k minus p equals to kt plus c where c equals to c2 minus c1 which is still a constant and now what I'll do is uh, basically 
you apply logarithmic rules whenever you have a subtraction that's a you could combine them and put them as a division but uh, my calculus book uh, the way it does it it wants the k minus p on top so what we'll do is just put a negative sign on both sides so put a negative sign both sides like that so what we actually end up having is now this becomes ln k minus p absolute value that becomes positive now we just subtract on the other side ln p like that this equals to negative k t minus c and now apply the uh, logarithmic rules I'll put this capital K just to make it look like different from this small letter K and, uh, and again make sure to watch my earlier video on logarithmic properties put that in the link below now we can combine these so this becomes ln of absolute value of K minus P over P like that because it's subtraction you just divide equals to negative KT minus C and now what we'll do is in take both sides as a exponent. So take e to the power of on both sides. So we're not changing anything. Just to get rid of this lawn, uh, that lawn function. So this e lawn cancels. What you end up having is absolute value of k minus p over p equals two. Now this is going to be well. I'm going to also. Um, apply some power functions rule and again make sure you watch my earlier videos on power functions what you can do is separate these down so this uh, subtraction is the same thing or this or subtraction is the same thing as multiplication when you have the same base so we'll have e to the negative c times it by e to the negative uh, kt yeah so now that we have this we can remove the absolute value sign by well basically saying that the right side could be plus or minus because it doesn't matter uh, then it's always going to be positive in other words we could write the inside of this k minus p p this equals 2 plus or minus e to negative c e negative kt and again uh, absolute value that's just all it means is just that the function could be plus or minus and you're always going to take the absolute value of it so this equals to that plus or minus uh, e negative c like that and now what we could do is simplify this even further and write k minus p over p equals 2 a e negative k t where a is just equal to well where a uh, equals 2 plus or minus e negative c which is again a constant so that could be any of those values so that's what a equals and what I'll do is I'll, I'll highlight this equation just because this is what my calculus book uses when we find out what a equals to and I'll call this equation 1 so that's equation 1 and now we could uh, start solving for p uh, individually um, or just uh, explicitly so we'll divide this out so what we get is k over p minus 1, let's divide that out, equals to well, 1 e negative kt. And now what we'll do is move the, the negative 1 here so it becomes positive 1, and then divide both sides by k. So what we get is 1 over p equals to a e negative kt plus 1, all divided by k. And now we could just flip these to get p. So p is equal to and what I'll do yeah so the k is on top now what we have is this uh, we'll move the one in front just the way my calculus book has it so one plus e negative k t like that yeah and there is our population uh, function explicitly uh, written down and that's the solution but oh but also yeah I forgot the one thing so the a so forgot the a variable, so the a, now we just need to solve for a. So to do that, well, what we uh, usually know is um, basically um, at t equals to zero, or the initial value, or the, or the initial time, p of zero, we'll write this as p zero, i.e. initial population, which is usually known. It's so initial population like that. So we'll write the a as a as a uh, written as the uh, equation of the initial population. So what we'll do now, we plug those inside. We'll use this equation just because it's uh, simpler. This equation one. So we'll write from 
uh, one, we have k minus p of zero, p zero, this equals to a, yeah, a times e, this is a negative kt, now it's equal to negative k zero, and e to the power of zero, that's just, well, zero. I mean, that's just equals to one. Remember, anything e to the power of anything, uh, e to the power of uh, zero, or any, any number to the power of zero is one. Again, make sure to watch that in my earlier video, put that in a link below. So this equals to, well, just a. So that is what our a function equals to, and now if we put this all together, what we end up having is, thus, the solution of the logistic equation is p of t equals to the carrying capacity, capital K, 1 plus a e negative k, which is the uh, lowercase k, the proportionality constant, like that, and then, yeah, sort that a bit neater, and, and then what uh, we have now is where, all right, where a is just equal to this capital K minus P zero over P zero, like that. So that's just how my Cox book has it written down. Actually, I'll just highlight this entire thing. So that is our solution. Yeah, and this is the explicit solution of the logistic equation. And now one more thing to check also. So also what we want to check is the limit. So the limit as t approaches infinity, which uh, like I showed in my earlier videos in population growth, it should approach the carrying capacity or which is again the carrying capacity is a population in the long run uh, due to limited resources. So the check the limit as t goes to infinity of p of t, this equals to limit t approaches infinity, and I'll plug those inside, so k, one plus e negative k t. Now these are all constants, this k and a, so what we have is, uh, what this actually ends up being is k, one plus, because none of these are dependent on the limit, and now we could put the limit all into the only thing that has a function of t, or the only thing affected by the limit, so this one is the e to the negative kt. So infinity e negative kt. And now this e to the negative kt, what we end up having is this e to the negative uh, k, uh, we're e to the neg when, when t is approaching infinity, we get e to the negative infinity, which equals to, well, uh, or it's just one over e to the infinity, which is the same thing as we have, same thing as running one over infinity, and then this is the same thing as one divided by a really, really large number, or infinity, it's approaching zero. So this means this is gonna be k over one plus a times zero, which is zero, which equals to k, the carrying capacity, which is as expected as expected, as I just stated earlier. The long run uh, population should approach that carrying capacity k. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, and that's what we expect from this equation as well. Anyways, that is the explicit solution of the logistic equation, and in later videos I'll go over some examples on it. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you learn from this uh, pretty extensive proof video. And uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.